Uh, I will start. I will start from. Uh, I know there is a session later on uh, the electoral outcomes, but I want to start with. Uh, with the outcome of the Italian election of, of a few months ago, and this uh, outcome uh, is, uh, uh, it was uh, extraordinary because uh, according to one estimate by the Italian, the Italian National Election Study, 39% of people changed their vote in the last elections. Okay, this is a huge result. Maybe it's too huge because we as scholars like researchers like to see some change, some variance. But when there is too much change, that's troubling us. At least it's troubling me. And uh, Berlusconi lo Berlusconi's party lost 50% of his votes. The Democratic Party lost one third of, the vo of their votes. A new party, a new movement, the Five Star Movement led by Grillo, became the first party in the house, in the lower house. Well, how, how do you explain this? I mean, uh, if we take the, a micro level perspective, that of the voter, who, 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 one could start arguing, well, what happened to partisanship? We don't have partisans any longer. Party ideology, party identification has a, is dead? Well, maybe yes, in Italy. Or maybe the, the, the nature of, part of, of partisanship is changing. It is not any longer based on social identity. Maybe it's based on other attitudes. Uh, some people also in this room argue that maybe leader, leaders become the basis of for this new partisanship. So from this perspective, one could say that uh, Berlusconi's tarnished image, in a way, explains why 50% of, of his voters left him. Uh, but then there is also a macro perspective, and that's the perspective of uh, a deep economic crisis. And uh, we have some theory there, some people agree, some disagree, which is the discontented voters voted against the government. This is the economic theory of the re, of incumbent. You vote against the incumbents, incumbents which could be also an interesting perspective. Well, actually, all, all governments in Southern Europe, the so-called pig countries, I like the name, the pigs, I mean, I like, I like pigs, and uh, also, be, actually, we should also add uh, two eyes, Iceland and Ireland, who are part of this pigs group. Okay, all these uh, uh, governments lost, and, uh, uh, is that enough? Well, they lost in a peculiar way because there were all these governments were, are trapped in a kind of two-level game because uh, the Southern European governments tried to implement harsh financial measures, austerity programs asked for by the European uh, authorities uh, they, try, they were trying to convince also their voters that they were doing the right thing, but it's not that easy in a, such a multi-level system of governance. Now, all of these, of course, happened in Italy, uh, but not only that. Italy had some additional features. These features have to do with uh, the fact that the main parties escaped or tried to escape from electoral responsibility because when Berlusconi resigned after, the, uh, after losing the confidence of the international markets, we didn't have any elections. We had uh, a so-called uh, non-partisan government. Uh, the, the, the official explanation is that Italy was under attack, so we had to fight back to react cutting wages and pensions, but that's something else. But the real explanation is that the party, the left party, the Democratic Party, was not ready to wage new elections. They didn't have a leader, they didn't have a partner, so <coughs> both the left and the right were very much happy to avoid being held accountable for, responsible for those harsh financial measures to be taken. So there was a kind of Machiavellian agreement 
This, of course, puzzled voters. Who was to be, who, who was responsible for this economic crisis? I mean, the left, the right, the former Berlusconi government, who? Uh, also, uh, where, the, where did the cries come from? From the Lehman Brothers, from the Northern Rock, from the European Union, from the Italian banks? I mean, there was a lot of disagreement, of course, and arguing in Italy on the origin of this crisis. And for the first time, a sort of uh, Europeanization of national politics, Europe became the key issue in the Italian campaign. Was Europe helping? Was, was the European Union helping Italy or was damaging Italy? Was the European Union, Union the source or, the, or the, the solution of this crisis? And all of this precipitated in the, in the increasing, in heightening a kind of uh, uh, anti-party sentiment which has always been strong in Italy and uh, the grill of success explain, it shows it very clearly. So, there were two themes, two recurring themes of this campaign. Was, was, one was blame attribution for the economic crisis. At least this is my reading of this uh, election. So, who was to be held responsible for what, for what went wrong? The second issue, the second theme was uh, uh, that the, the legitimacy of political parties, their effectiveness was questioned was questioned mainly by, by Grillo and by other parties, but Grillo was the one who was most effective in, uh, in reaping these anti-party sentiments which was rising. Okay, now, uh, popular perception of the economy. Uh, you can see that uh, most of Italians, two-thirds, no, almost 82% in, uh, in, in the last panel, wave we had before the elections. This, this data came from a five-way panel which ran throughout uh, two years, 2011-2013. So when Berlusconi was still in power, 71% was holding office, 71% of the people thought the economy was go doing bad. A year later, it went up to 82%, which is uh, astonishing. It, I show a long time, a time series since 2001 to see how dramatic this change in perception was. But not, not only the economic perceptions uh, were affected by the crisis, but also the attitudes, of polit the political attitudes of, uh, of the people. Is this working? Is this a pointer? Yeah, probably. Yeah, okay, it is a point. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, there, she thought, who was responsible for the crisis? The Italians thought that the international financial markets were responsible, then the Berlusconi was responsible, and the European Union was responsible. So on a 0 10 scale, see the European Union is the third, comes third. Uh, then uh, uh, the trust in the EU uh, went up and down. And then the most important, I would say, of this, of this finding is that, uh, is that the trust in parties, the indicator of trust of parties fell, fell a lot. And we can uh, further look at this uh, trust in parties by uh, focusing on the people who voted for the three parties. So, we, I selected the people who voted for three, the, three, the three parties and went back in the panel to see how they changed their mind. As you can see, the, the, the people, the voters who were most supportive of the parties where the, the red line is the Berlusconi's party, five, five, on a, the average value is five on a zero ten scale. Then of course, in spring 2011, these people were ousted of, uh, this party was ousted of power, so according to the, 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 the idea that <coughs> if you lose, <laughs> you are dissatisfied. These people became, became unhappy about the, the parties, the performance of the parties. And of course, Grillo's, Grillo's supporters showed the lowest, lowest uh, <coughs> liking of the, the party themselves. So, uh, 
all this mess was reflected in a way reproduced by the communication, by the campaign. Uh, this is, yes, I have only three minutes left. Oh my goodness, four minutes left. Then, uh, it, was a, it was a negative campaign, which means that, uh, that uh, all the news was, were portraying a situation of crisis, and uh, who was acting in this campaign? Parties were not acting. You can see that only 12% of people report being contacted by a party during this campaign. It was one third 2006, in 2006, even the secondary association were just out, were swept away. So all this campaign was uh, uh, waged on TV. This is the time that uh, they voted to the four candidates. Only in the last time, the last week, Grillo got some, some uh, uh, visibility. And uh, it's not a surprise that people report that uh, television is the main source of information, is 71%. Then the internet come with 8% uh, with, uh, uh, scholars of internet and democracy can tell me whether it is bad, is wrong, is low, or is high, but you have to uh, look uh, to, to consider that 20% of the newspapers, news, the articles, uh, according <coughs> to a content analysis that we did, uh, were based on tweet. One minute, then. Uh, there is uh, a uh, very strong uh, uh, two cleavages, a passive and active cleavage and uh, an age group cleavage in using internet. It's very easy to be passive on internet and only young people are able to engage actively on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, <coughs> on, in, on the web. Did the campaign move public opinion? Yes, po policy priorities change and the unemployment was the most important Thing. Did the campaign move uh, leaders' uh, standing? Yes, Berlusconi and Grillo improved. Versani was stable. Uh, and and uh, surprisingly, uh, even the evaluation of Berlusconi as uh, capable of steering the economy went slightly up in, during the campaign. Uh, I am, I'm not talking about the outcome. What kind? What what? Uh, uh, but what kind of uh, interpretation we can give of the people's motivation? I produce, I, 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 <coughs> I, I lay out four perspectives. One is the, the standard. We don't have time. I'm no, no, I'm just saying, I'm just commenting this. Four perspectives, which means that retrospective economic evaluation or blame attribution, and the most interesting thing that the impact of uh, the people's discontent, being discontent on the vote, it was mediated by the structure of blame and attribution. And this is, I guess, uh, together with, the, with, with this rising protest uh, and anti-party system, anti-party sentiment, is the, my explanation of uh, this outcome. You, you can read it in a paper that has been uploaded, or you can, uh, I'm just, you can, by this book, Voto Amaro, <laughs> and, uh, and which is published by the Italian National Election Study as a kind of, uh, I have 40, 41 seconds left according no, no, to my no. timer. <laughs> I'm sorry, but. Uh, Swiss uh, timing. Okay. <laughs> okay, then thanks for your attention.